Hey, this is Andrew Reverso with Impact Soundworks, and today I'd like to show you our newest virtual instrument, Straight Ahead Jazz Horns. This is a total reimagining of an older sample library from Straight Ahead Samples. We're using the same excellent performances, but we've totally re-edited and reprocessed the entire sample pool. We've built an all-new Contact Instrument, which works in Contact Player, and in collaboration, we've created an incredible new game-breaking technology called smart voicing. And no, I'm not exaggerating. We're going to check that out in a minute. But first, here's a little bit more about the library itself. Straight Ahead Jazz Horns features 13 deeply sampled solo instruments. You can see the list here on the left. And each of these are totally unique. These are not uh, repitched samples or faked round robins or anything like that. These are unique players, each with their own style, different instruments, different recordings all together. Here we have the lead trumpet. These are really, really expressive and deeply sampled. Each has three to 4,000 samples or more, two microphone positions. And if you've used our previous tact instruments, you'll immediately recognize the articulation interface where you can control things like mapping for every articulation as well as dynamic control. So for example, sustains right now are on crossfades with the mod wheel or any other CC, while staccatos are on velocity. You'll also find other important and idiomatic playing techniques like falls, which you just heard, as well as doits, which sound like this. And then you have bends, shakes, and that's connected to a long fall there. But then you have different sorts of attacks as well, like flops, or turns. And all of these are really crucial for making realistic sounding jazz mock-ups. Now, before I go through some of the other instruments and features here, I really want to show off our multi-ensemble technology that we developed for this library called Smart Voicing. Here we have a four trumpet ensemble. It's featuring the lead trumpet, which you just heard, as well as three other trumpet players. And again, these are real players. These aren't just uh, repitched recordings or anything like that. And you can see at the top that in the multi-script, we have a voicing type and here it's set to four part close, but you also have triads, unisons, and octaves, as well as an approach type, which I'll talk about in a bit, and then some humanization parameters. What happens here is that you play a chord in your left hand. For example, here we have a D minor chord, and then in your right hand, you play a melody. The melody will be harmonized through these instruments based on the voicing that you've selected. So I'm gonna play a simple D minor scale with my right hand, just using the default articulation. And as I play the scale, the chords are being generated in real time and arranged for all four of these trumpets based on the chord that was played in the left hand and what I'm playing in the right hand. And the exact voicing uh, is built from a handmade database, tens of thousands of different real jazz voicings. So now let's hear it with triads. And this time I'll play an A minor chord in my left hand, which you can see reflected in the real time generated sheet music display. Very cool and I'll play an A minor scale here. Now what happens if I play notes outside of the scale? For example, E flat. The chords generated depend on, again, the voicing that you selected, as well as the previous note that you played. So if you go from an E flat to an E, the chords that are generated will vary depending on what kind of approach type you pick, suggested, chromatic. Now, because this is essentially a very intelligent MIDI modification script, you can use articulation key switches here, just like you would any other solo instrument patch. So for example, if we wanted to play uh, staccatissimo instead,
Really though, the best way to demonstrate this is with a melody and some chords that hopefully you're familiar with. Uh, in this case, let's try Mas Que Nada by Sergio Mendes, one of my personal favorite tracks in the Brazilian jazz style. I have the chords recorded here. They're very, very simple. And I'm just gonna play a little bit of the melody so you can get a sense of what it sounds like. And then it goes on for the B section, but that's the basic idea. So normally voicing that for jazz horn ensemble might take a little bit of time in MIDI. You'd have to play in all the individual instruments. You'd have to worry about, again, voices stacking in an unrealistic way. With smart voicing, we can skip all that. What I've done here is I've put the chords from the piano into the left hand of three different multis. We have four trumpets, four trombones, and five saxes, and they all have the same chord data. Then I recorded the piano melody, pretty simple, just one pass. And aside from that, I just added a few key switches to change articulations and added a little bossa nova beat. So let's hear what that sounds like. Everything that you just heard was being generated with two very simple inputs. The first is the melody, just monophonic, plain old melody, and the other are these chord changes. And these chords here are just the backbone for the chords that are being generated by smart voicing. Obviously, we had way more chords, way more interesting stuff going on than just these simple chord inputs. But that's the beauty of smart voicing. It does all the arranging and note selection work for you. And it's all realistic because all of those split MIDI notes that are being generated are being sent to each individual instrument. But it gets even better. Using contacts send MIDI to the outside world feature. So here for the trumpet ensemble, I have script generated notes being sent out. You can actually have contact drive another software instrument. Let's turn up some pizzicato strings and hear what that sounds like. The arranging possibilities here are just incredible. Again, all you need are chord changes in your left hand, and the chord changes don't have to be particularly jazzy. They can just be sort of the basic triads or seventh chords that you need for your piece. And in the right hand, you just play a simple mono melody. And through smart voicing, you get these fully arranged, realistic parts that are properly harmonized with the melody that you play. I might do another video on smart voicing, so stay tuned for that. For now though, I'm gonna get back to the main library and the solo instruments. I know I'm not the best jazz keyboardist, but hopefully you're getting an idea of the expressiveness of each of these instruments and what they can do. So here are some of the other features common to all the instruments in straight ahead jazz horns. All of them have two mic positions, each of which has a different tone. Let's turn on the other mic. We'll disable the first one. As with our Ventus instruments, we also have CC assignable dynamics and vibrato. And here they're set to CC one and two, but these can of course be changed. And we also have some handy features like phase align sustain samples, which are optional and reduce the phasing if you're doing quick dynamic crossfades. We also have an alternate dynamic mode, which uses more EQ and filters for the dynamic changes. Which one you use will depend on the kind of music you're doing, how fast the dynamic changes are, and whether the instruments are used solo or as part of an ensemble. There are also a number of advanced features here which let you tweak things like vibrato, uh, different legato settings, whether the round robins are sequential or random. One useful feature is the ability to temporarily latch the attack articulations. So let's say I have a staccato enabled.
Now let's say I decide to use a flop attack. So I hold the key switch for that. Whoops, I forgot to switch the key switch. And so the following notes got messed up. If you use temp attack key switch, then even if you're still holding the attack key switch, it won't do it for the subsequent notes. This is particularly handy for a live performance because if you have the wrong articulation enabled, it can really mess you up. As I'm continuing, I'm gonna go ahead and switch here to the lead alto sax and just play a little bit of that. And then we'll check out some of the articulations in a bit more detail and some of the changes that we made to tact. So diving back into the articulations tab, and again, we do have a video on tact specifically if you wanna check that out. One of the new features that we added is the ability to toggle key release triggers on and off. And the best way to explain this is just to demonstrate it. So here's a normal staccato. And as I play short notes, of course, the staccatos are even shorter. But if we enable this option, then the full recording will play each time regardless of how long the note is. Each time I hit a note there, it was very, very short, but you heard the full recording. Uh, this can be very useful for falls, so you don't cut them short. I'm just tapping the key there, and we're getting the full recording each time. Then we have these mid articulations, which I showed off before, but it's worth showing again. They only trigger when you're already playing a note. These are just great for realism and they really add a lot to your MIDI mockups. Lastly, we also have our custom effects rack with analog modeled EQ, compressor, delay, and a convolution reverb. We've enabled the reverb for the solo instruments by default, but you can turn it off if you wanna save CPU and use a send effect in your DAW instead. You'll also notice that for both the instruments and the multis, we have 16-bit and 24-bit versions of the entire library. So. If you care about that 24-bit fidelity, it's there and waiting for you. Straight Ahead Jazz Horns is available now for the price of $249, and again, this works with the free Contact Player version 5.5 or higher. If you already own the original Straight Ahead Jazz library, please contact us. We have a very big discount for you. This has been Andrew Aversa. I hope you enjoyed the library. I'll see you in the next video.